I've had a lot of fun doing these life on film videos as I've been working through my backlog of film. There have been tons of rolls of film that just sat undeveloped for so long. And what we've been doing is just developing little by little. And I share the photos in these videos. It's been a lot of fun, but as of today, we are finally completely caught up on the backlog. I have no outstanding rolls of film that need to be developed. Everything is taken care of. So today we're going to be taking a look at the last remaining rolls that I just developed. I had a handful of black and white rolls left, and then I also sent a few color rolls of film out to the darkroom lab. So we're going to take a look at the scans together today and uh, talk about them a little bit. Big shout out to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video. I'll have links and codes down below to save you some money, and I'll tell you more about them in a bit, but let's get into these film scans. First up was a roll from this past fall. I shot this Ilford Delta 3200 in my Roloflex T. Uh, some photos of Elliot with his pumpkin that he carved out at Tar Hollow State Park. I just love Ilford Delta 3200 in 120 size. Delta 3200 is by far my favorite black and white. The sharpness, the contrast, the grain especially, uh, I like this film better than pushing HP5 to 3200 uh, or even 6400, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit. But everything about this film is just ideal for me when it comes to black and white. Got some portraits of Nathan that I shot here in the office, again with the Roloflex T. Uh, no close-up filters or anything. I don't have any filters for that camera specifically. I used to use close-up filters a lot on my older Roloflex cameras that I had, uh, but with the Roloflex T, this is pretty much minimum focus distance or really close to it, uh, but I still think that's a good distance for a portrait. Lighting wise for this, um, I had my Aperture 300D as the key light with a softbox, and then the Aperture 120D was behind him as a rim light, uh, just using the little lantern modifier. Just the video lights that I use here to film these videos, no flashes or anything like that. I used to love using off-camera flash, but these days, uh, just because of the ease of using continuous light and knowing exactly how the light's falling and seeing it in real time, um, I've really come to enjoy shooting stills with continuous lighting. And I think this was either 1 one twenty-fifth of a second, maybe 1 60th um, at f3.5. That's the maximum aperture on that camera. And uh, these came out really, really sharp. And that roll of HP5 pushed to 6400. I have a couple of photos here from that roll that I wanted to share just to show how well that film pushes. Uh, nothing exciting. It's just a couple of photos I shot in our old house as we were getting ready to leave and uh, we were all packed up. So this shot here inside the garage, this is just where the ladder would fold down uh, to get up into the attic. I just liked the chain hanging down there, um, all of the kind of wear on the ceiling there, the different you know hooks that had been screwed in to hang things over the years. And I just liked the light that was coming in through the side window there. But if you zoom in on this, uh, to really get a good idea of the grain and also the detail there. HP5, a 400 speed film being pushed all the way to 6400. Uh, it's just surprising how well this film really holds up. Another one here, uh, just shooting into the backyard basically from inside the house. Um, I just liked this plant that we always had hanging in this corner here, being able to see a little bit of the backyard, the kids slide, their little playhouse. Um, it's the backyard I grew up in. Uh, I just wanted to shoot this really just for my own sake of all the years looking out, you know, into the backyard, especially as the kids were getting older and the dynamic range of this being pushed to 6400 the highlights you know the the sun hitting the tin roof back there on the little playhouse that's definitely where it's starting to clip just a little bit but still in the sky everything inside the house as well uh, that just that kind of surprised me that that much information was still there being pushed that far now we're going to look at some Tri-X that was pushed to 3200 in 35 millimeter. Uh, this was before I made the jump from shooting Tri-X for years and I switched over to HP5. And from my experience, Tri-X doesn't hold nearly as much shadow detail, especially when you're pushing in comparison to HP5. Uh, this roll said FM2 roll 1, so... I think this was like the first roll after I rebought an FM2 after I had sold one and uh, just couldn't resist having it again. Uh, that's always been one of my favorite cameras. Some photos I shot here in the office of Taker. Some of you might remember this office with the black walls uh, at our old house. If you've been watching these videos long enough or if you've stumbled across one of my older videos, you might recognize this. And then clearly Molly took the camera and shot some photos of me and Taker and Rusi. Both Taker and I looking much younger in these photos. Again, this was 10 years ago, maybe nine years ago. 
But as you can see, Tri-X being pushed 3200, it's a lot grainier, a lot less shadow detail, and it is 35 millimeter, so it is gonna have more grain than say a 120 film would be if it's pushed. And actually there was a roll of Tri-X pushed to 3200 and 120 in my backlog. However, I developed the film, realized it was a roll of film Molly and I shot about 10 years ago uh, on our honeymoon, and no one is going to see that roll, so moving on. Now we're going to get into some color scans. So I sent all of this film out to the darkroom. I haven't developed color film at home in over 10 years at this point. Uh, I just don't feel like buying the chemicals if I'm only going to shoot a roll of color film here and there. So uh, I sent all of this off to the darkroom. And the first roll was this roll of ectochrome that was expired when I shot it in late 2013 so it was already expired and then i didn't develop it for over 10 years so i was very skeptical of how this was going to turn out i knew i shot it with the fuji gf670 when i had it all those years ago i had the film developed in the e6 process like you normally would it isn't cross-processed however it still has this really strong red cast not just the scans but the actual film itself you can see on the light table it has a really really heavy red cast However, just a couple of minutes with each photo in Lightroom, just using the curves and the color channels, you can just do some simple adjustments to actually get rid of that red cast and get you a much more natural, true to life kind of color. I'm sure it would look even better if I shot and developed this film when it was fresh, but for film that's, you know, sat undeveloped for this long that was expired probably in the early 2000s, uh, I'm still really shocked at how well this held up. There was also a roll of Kodak Ultramax 400 in the backlog, and I didn't realize it until getting the scans back. This was actually one of Molly's rolls, so that was a nice surprise, getting some photos of me with the kids. Uh, that's not nearly as often. I'm usually the one actually taking the photo, clipping the kids' nails in the backyard out at the old house. Uh, for whatever reason, our kids only let me do that, so I'm always the one taking care of the nails taking a nap on the hammock with Nora, uh, the document your life hat. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I don't have one anymore. Uh, I always get stoked when I see people post, you know, that they're still wearing that hat. If you want to see more of like those hats and shirts and stuff like that, I've thought about doing like a little bit of a refresh and releasing those again. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to see more of that again, but, um, there's just been a lot more going on lately. And this photo that she shot of Elliot, I love. We had uh, this like film that you put over the windows that casts all these different kind of colors uh, in our bathroom at the old house. Uh, the kids loved it when they were in the bath, all the colors from the light shining in. And uh, she shot this one of Elliot and just all of the colors cast on him and his hair, uh, the, the really cool shadows behind him. I just love this photo. And now we've come to the final two rolls. These are two rolls of color film that I had never shot before. I shared one of the photos on Instagram asking people, hey, what film do you think this was shot with? And a lot of people guessed the new Harmon Phoenix film. I have a couple rolls of that. I got it just like a week or so before it was actually revealed. So I haven't shot anything yet. I've wanted to kind of wait a little bit. So I will be shooting some of that and sharing my thoughts on it eventually. Uh, but it wasn't that film. A lot of people guessed like Velvet or Provia. Uh, there were plenty of guesses all around, but nobody actually guessed what it was, and that was Lamography's Color 92. Uh, this came out, I believe, in like mid-2023, um, and I shot a couple of rolls around summer, but hadn't developed anything until just now, and it has a very different look to it. I'll say that. I remember I shot a photo of this Rubik's Cube because I wanted to see just how like your primary colors are actually going to come through in that film and colors that we're all familiar with just as sort of like a, a neutral basis. And I'm surprised at how accurate those colors actually came through. But the shadows definitely have this kind of cast to them that's sort of like between a green and like a golden brown. It's somewhere in there. And the highlights are very, very blue, very cool highlights. We've got a field out behind our house that eventually we want to get some animals out there. But for the time being, I've just been letting it grow. And uh, we had some goats come out and just clear the field for us. So the goats were with us for just a few weeks. We basically rented them off a local farmer and uh, he came out, fenced it in, let the goats roam for a few weeks and they completely cleared that whole field. 
It was amazing. And the kids loved it, obviously. Uh, so I miss having the goats back there. But I shot these photos in midday sun in the middle of summer, and the highlights are just not what I was expecting at all. I tried to adjust the scans as much as I could in order to kind of offset that really blue kind of weird color, but this is what this film is. I mean, this is how it's made to look. Some of the photos of forest inside the house, I really like the way the color came through in these, so I can't really say definitively like this film is good for this, but not for that. Uh, it's a mixed bag really, but I am happy with the color in a couple of these. It has a very different look and it's very grainy compared to other, you know, 35 millimeter color films, especially popular ones that are out there. Uh, but it does have an interesting look and I like these. I got a couple of weird effects on the film or weird defects, I should say. Uh, this photo right here, I don't know what is happening on the film itself, as well as on this other photo of Molly holding Forrest. At first, I thought it was this like some sort of issue in the scanning process, but I got the negatives back. I looked at them and it's the film itself. So um, if you've seen anything like this on Color 92, let me know down below. Um, I haven't seen anybody post anything like this, but I'm not sure exactly what caused it. Those are the only two photos that it happened on, but still, I've never seen anything like this in a color negative film, so I'm kind of curious what caused that. But I took one of the roles to the Franklin Park Conservatory in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it's an awesome place. We love taking the kids there. And I brought one of those roles specifically because all of the greens and blues in this place, I really wanted to see how the film would handle it. And I'm actually really excited about how these turned out. The different kinds of light we were in, whether we were outside or inside one of the greenhouses, uh, that really shifted which way the film would go in terms of how the colors would come out. The stuff inside the greenhouse, I think looks awesome. The blues and greens really, really shine here. And I think the film leaning in that direction, it works well for this kind of subject matter. Um, this one right here, this was definitely my favorite from the role. It was one that I shared on Instagram, just asking people, what film do you think this was shot with? I just love how vibrant the colors are here. And then they have this outdoor area where the kids can, you know, wade through the water, splash around. So I shot some photos of Molly with the kids here. And I think this area, it has a much different look. And I think altogether it was just from underexposure. I think I probably should have overexposed uh, for this scene right here because all the shadows in the trees there, uh, it just looks way muddier than the stuff inside did. Anytime we take the kids to a place like this where it's going to be busy and kind of crowded, uh, we usually put one of these stickers on Nora's shirts that just say, I am autistic and nonverbal. Please be patient and kind. Uh, this kind of thing can be overwhelming for her and many other kids who are on the autism spectrum. And especially for people who don't know what autism looks like or uh, just what it's like for kids in their day to day life. It's easy for people to see a kid having a hard time and thinking, oh, well, that kid's just throwing a temper tantrum and they're being a brat. Uh, you never know what the kid is going through or what the family is going through. So uh, these are helpful in public places, but since it's in one of these photos, I thought I would share it here as well. Just a reminder to all of you, uh, always please just be patient and kind. But that is the backlog. We are completely caught up on all of the film that I had just sitting undeveloped for all those years. I've had a lot of fun doing these videos as I've worked through that, and I hope you've enjoyed them as well. I'll continue to do those videos as I shoot with the M6. Uh, it might not be as frequent because currently I have no film left to develop. So as I continue shooting, I will be doing these videos just not as frequently. So I hope you've enjoyed them. Uh, also, thank you to everybody who has been watching this video. If you can't already tell, I'm under the weather and I'm actively losing my voice as I record this video. So I'm going to wrap it up while I can. Uh, I'm going to thank our sponsor today, KEH Camera, for all of their support. KEH Camera has been sponsoring this channel for many years, but I've actually been buying and recommending their service to people long before that. Buying, selling, and trading used photography gear, they've been in business for over 40 years now. A shop that's dedicated to helping photographers improve their craft while also promoting sustainability. Buying pre-owned gear and extending the life cycle of that gear, you're not only saving money, but you're also reducing the amount of items that are just going to end up in a landfill. Their inventory is massive and it's always changing, so you can shop for some of those ultra rare items, or you can shop for some of the most popular cameras and lenses that are available today. You can shop knowing that this pre-owned gear has been thoroughly cleaned, tested, and graded before the purchase. Along with a 180-day warranty as well as a 21-day return policy, you can actually shop for gear with peace of mind. 
As a special offer for all of my viewers, KEH has provided exclusive discounts and codes that you can use to save yourself some money, or you can use it to get a bonus on your quote if you decide to sell your gear. Anytime you're shopping with KEH, make sure you use the links and the codes down below. This goes a long way at supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. In fact, it'll actually save you some money as well. So thank you again to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. That's it for this video. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you weren't aware, my new book, Surveyor, it is available for pre-order as well. Massive, massive thanks to everybody for all of their support on the pre-sale alone. Uh, it's far exceeded my expectations so i just wanted to say thank you as well um there will be more updates as you know production moves on and i'll keep you all up to speed but i uh, just wanted to say thank you to everybody so that's it for this video love you guys very much and i'll see you guys soon